Bleeding time. The bleeding time test is a useful tool to test for platelet plug formation and capillary integrity. The bleeding time test is ordered on a patient scheduled for surgery. The bleeding time is dependent upon the efficiency of tissue fluid in accelerating the coagulation process on capillary function and the number of blood platelets present and their ability to form a platelet plug. Duke's method. Materials required. Sterile disposable blood lancet capable of a 5 mm wide and a 1 mm deep puncture. Stopwatch. Watchman number 1 circular filter paper. Spirit and cotton swabs. Gloves. Procedure. With the Duke method, the patient is pricked with a lancet, preferably on the earlobe or fingertip, after having been swabbed with alcohol. Let the alcohol dry. Prick the fingertip. The prick should be about 3 to 4 millimeters deep. At the same time, start the stopwatch. Wipe the blood every 30 seconds with a filter paper, taking care to wipe it from the side and not directly on the puncture site. The test ceases when bleeding ceases. Disadvantages of the test. Though this test method is the easiest to perform, but is the least standardized and has the least precision and accuracy. Following precautions should be enforced. Standard depth pricker should be prescribed. A faint stain of blood should not be avoided. Time should be noted properly. IV method. Preparation of the patient. This test is used to see how long it will take for the patient to stop bleeding and a clot to form after a puncture is made in the forearm. Unless the patient is an infant, inform the patient how the test will be done. Let the patient know that he may experience some discomfort from the incision and the cuff of the sphygmomanometer. It is important that you ask the patient whether or not they have taken aspirin, aspirin containing compounds or blood thinners such as heparin or coumadin recently. These drugs will cause a falsely abnormal bleeding time and the test should not be done in such cases. Materials required are similar as in Duke's method. In addition, a blood pressure apparatus is required. Procedure Place a sphygmomanometer cuff around the patient arm above the elbow. Inflate to 40 mm mercury and keep it at this pressure throughout the test. Clean the area with 70% ethanol and allow to dry. Select a site on the patient's forearm approximately 3 fingers width below the bend in the elbow that is free of visible subcutaneous veins. A sterile disposable blood lancet is used to make two shallow incisions about 2 to 3 millimeters deep on the underside of the forearm. The punctures must be performed within 30 to 60 seconds of inflation of the blood pressure cuff. Simultaneously start the stopwatch. Do not wipe the blood. After 50 seconds have passed, blot the blood with the filter paper. The filter paper must not touch the wound on the arm. Blot the site at regular 30 second intervals. Rotate the filter paper after each 15 seconds. When bleeding ceases and blood no longer is drawn to the filter paper, stop the stopwatch and release the blood pressure cuff by turning the knob next to the bulb in the opposite direction used to inflate the cuff. Remove the blood pressure cuff. Record the bleeding time for both puncture sites. The average of the two readings will give the bleeding time. It is determined to the nearest 30 seconds. If bleeding continues for more than 15 minutes, the procedure should be discontinued and pressure applied to the wound sites. The bleeding time should be repeated on the other arm. If bleeding has again not ceased within 15 minutes, the results are reported as greater than 15 minutes. After ensuring that the bleeding has stopped, carefully bandage the site. 
appropriately discard all used materials and wash hands. Normal values of bleeding time range between 2 to 7 minutes. Quality control is accomplished through the standardization of the procedure. The wound should be a standard length and depth and a constant pressure of 40 mm mercury should be maintained throughout the procedure. Sources of error. If the patient has taken aspirin or aspirin containing compounds 7 to 10 days prior to the procedure, the bleeding time may be prolonged. The technician must determine the patient's history concerning aspirin ingestion to ensure quality results. Results may be affected by an improperly performed puncture, a puncture that is too shallow, too deep or in an inappropriate location will adversely affect test results. The alcohol must be completely dried before making the puncture. If residual alcohol is on a puncture site, the bleeding time will be erroneously prolonged. If the technician does not initiate timing of the procedure simultaneously with the puncture, the results will be adversely affected. If you allow the filter paper to touch the wound, the platelet clot may be dislodged, causing falsely elevated results. If the stopwatch has not been appropriately calibrated, it may keep incorrect time. Stopwatches should be calibrated on a regular basis as a part of the quality assurance program. The direction of the incision should be consistent. A horizontal incision gives a longer bleeding time than a vertical incision.